I'm going to demonstrate how to add the two most basic security features, authentication and encryption, to a Stratix 10 design. I will be following the AN 970 Stratix 10 security tutorial document, which can be downloaded from the Intel website. This tutorial is targeted for the Stratix 10 SX SOC development kit, though it can easily be adapted to any Stratix 10 or Agilex device that supports advanced security features. I'm not going to go into too many details about the various security options here. To get more information, we'll point out some other documents that describe all the available security features and options for these devices. So let's get started. You can see the tutorial document displayed on the screen. We also have a live video of the Stratix 10 development kit that I'm using for this demo. Looking at the document, the introduction describes some of the contents of the document and gives links to other documents which provide detailed information about all the security options available for the Stratix 10. Specifically, the Stratix 10 device security user guide and the security methodology guide for Intel FPGAs. Next chapter, you can see the block diagram of the device kit that we're using. And then we jump into the actual tutorial itself. So we're going to start by creating a top level directory called security tutorial. And then inside this directory, we're going to create a subdirectory called keys. And using the Windows command shell, I have the security tutorial directory. Inside of that, you can see the keys directory. The two other directories, output files and QDB, will be created by Quartus as we proceed through the tutorial. So we're going to start by creating a very simple Quartus design that blinks some LEDs. This will give us an easy way to see if our design successfully loads onto the FPGA as we add the security features. A simple Verilog design is included in the tutorial document, and you can copy and paste that into a text file that you create called securitytutorial.v. So that would be this piece here. You would just copy this from the document, open up your editor, and paste it in and call it securitytutorial.v. To accompany the Verilog design file, a QSF file is needed to define pin locations for the clock, LEDs, etc. Since this dev kit uses smart VID for voltage control, those definitions are included as well. And that would be this piece here. You would copy this starting here up to here into another doc, uh, file called securitytutorial.qsf. Now we're going to take these files and we're going to create a new Quartus design called Security Tutorial. And then we'll import these files. The tutorial walks you through how to do that. And I've already done that here to save some time. So here's the basic design in Quartus. The security tutorial.v file is the top level file, and this is the simple code that blinks the LED. And then the QSF file, which has all the pin definitions, etc., are included as well. So now we want to take this design and build it and see if it works on the board. So Clicking this arrow key here will build the design, and I've already done that. So what we're going to do is start a programmer and try to load the file and see if we can get some blinking LEDs. So we're going to do an auto detect, see if we can find the FPGA and the JTAG chain. It found something and we have to tell us specifically what it is. So in this case, I know this is the HU2AS device. And now we're going to add the soft file to this. Now, ordinarily, Quartus is going to put the soft file in the output files directory. Uh, for the tutorial, I copied all the soft files into the keys directory to make it easier to generate the uh, security enabled files. So I'm just going to grab the security tutorial.soft from here, open that file. Okay, 
and we're going to program this into the device by clicking program configure and then the start button. So we can see some LEDs blinking in the live video feed of the dev kit, and we have 100% successful on uh, the progress meter for programming. So we've just verified that this simple design will actually build and load and run onto the FP FPGA. So now we're gonna start adding some security features. First, we're gonna add authentication. And in fact, in order to use any of the Stratic Sense security features, authentication has to be enabled first. To add authentication, we first have to generate the appropriate key files. There are several files we're gonna create. Authentication is based upon the public key infrastructure methodology. This requires us to generate both private and public keys. The public key will be loaded onto the FPGA and the private key will be used to create the authenticated or signed bitstream. We're gonna be creating two sets of public private keys. One is the base key, which we've programmed onto the FPGA and the other is derived from that base key and is used to sign the bitstreams. The security methodology guide in Stratix 10 device security guide goes into much more detail about base keys and derived keys, and I recommend consulting them for your specific use case. So the tutorial document provides commands you're gonna to use to create all of the key files. That's chapter three, it talks about uh, authentication. And you can see here, these commands here that you'll run in that DOS uh, command shell. And uh, if you run all these commands here, you're gonna end up with a root.qky file, which we use to program into the FPGA, and the app15.qky file, which we use to generate an authenticated bitstream. And a description of the files you can see here in the tutorial. So we're gonna add authentication to the, the Quartus design. First, we're going to go into Quartus again, and we're going to go to the Assignments Device menu, Device and Pin Options. And for authentication, we need to specify the Quartus key file. So I have this pointing to the keys directory, and what we want here for the Quartus key file is the app 15 QKY. This is the application specific key file that has been derived from the root key. So we're going to open that and say OK and OK. Now, to generate a new soft file, you don't have to build the entire thing. You can actually go into the processing and start um, the assembler. Once you do this, it'll go through and generate a new soft file that has the authenticated design. I'm not going to do that in tutorials because it's going to take a little while to do that. And I've pre-generated that. So if we look in the keys directory again, I have um, the authenticated soft file right here. Now, once we've added uh, a security feature to the design, we can no longer directly load the soft file. What we need to do is generate an authenticated bitstream RBF file for that. So let's do that. Looking back at the tutorial. Here's the command we're going to use. This is the Quartus PFG command, which will take your soft file that you find in the output files directory. And we're going to generate something called signed app.rbf, which is a signed bitstream file and we're specifying the uh, the private PEM file that we generated earlier. Now I've already done that. As you can see in this uh, directory listing here. So the RBF file that we're looking for is signed app.rbf, which I have. So now in order to load this, we need to actually load uh, the key file onto the FPGA 
which is the whole purpose of security. If you don't have the key file programmed in the FPGA, you're not going to be able to load a signed design. And likewise, if you do have a key file programmed and you attempt to load an unsigned design, it's not going to work. So let's load that key file by going back to programmer. And we're going to choose add QKY CSERT fuse file. So in this case, we want to load root.qky, which is the base key file that the application key files are derived from. And if you look here, root.qky has been added to programmer. We don't need to load the soft file. So we're going to select this and start. Little warning message, make sure you know what you're doing. And we have 100% successful. So what we just did was load the root.qky file. At this point, we should be able to load the signed bitstream file. So let's try that. Change file. So we have signed app.rbf. It shows up here. Click the program configure box, uncheck the root.qky. And let's see if we can load that. Now, if you watch the video here, you'll see the lights turn off as we configure, and then they should start up again. And there we go. So what just happened was we loaded the root.qky file, which is the, the base key, and we loaded the signed bitstream application, the signed app.rbf onto the board. And the lights are blinking, and we just verify that we can do that. So the next step is to see if we can add uh, encryption to the design. So to add encryption, we're going to generate an AES-based encryption key and a certificate file that wraps that key before we can program it into the FPGA. We're also going to regenerate the soft file uh, before we can create a new .rbf bitstream file. The tutorial document lists the commands you need to run in a command shell to generate the encryption key files. So let's go to that chapter. Adding encryption. So the first thing we're going to do is go into quarters again. Go back to the assignments device menu device and pin options, security, and we want to enable configuration bitstream encryption by clicking that box. We don't need uh, partial reconfiguration for the tutorial. Now you have options where you can store the encryption key. You can store it in battery backed up RAM, eFuses, or uh, Quad SPI intrinsic ID PUF. Uh, Puff standing for a physically unclonable function. All of these options are described in the documentation, but for this tutorial, we're going to use eFuses, and it's going to be a virtual eFuse. We're not programming any fuses uh, permanently here. That's all we need to do. So we've specified encryption, and what we need to do now is rerun the assembler like we did when we added. Uh, authentication. So you're going to click start assembler. And it's going to run through its paces. It's going to generate a new soft file and put it in the output files directory. And I've already done that and the soft file uh, got generated and I copied it into this directory and named it. Um, sec toot inc, which is security tutorial encrypted soft. So once again, we have to take the soft file and generate a .rbf file. And when we do that, we have to not only add um, the authentication key, but we also have to add now the encryption key since it is a signed encrypted uh, bitstream. So to do that, the tutorial document again describes the steps you need to go through. Here we go, Quartus Encrypt is used to generate uh, an AES key file. And then these commands here are generate certificates that will be used to wrap that key file. So again, copy these 
out of the document into your DOS command shell, and you'll run these. And what you're going to end up with is uh, the appropriate files you need to generate the RBF. This is the final command here that will give us something called signed enc.rbf, which is a signed encrypted bitstream file. And this is the file that we're going to load onto the FPGA. Going back to Quartus. Before we can actually do that, we need to load the, uh, the uh, certificate wrapped encryption key onto the FPGA into virtual eFuses. So again, let's bring up Programmer. So we're going to change QKY CCERT Fuse file. In this case, we're going to choose CCERT, which is a compact certificate file. And these are the files that we generated in those scripts from the, the document. We're going to load the signed eFuse1.ccert. Open that. Let's deselect the RBF and select the CCERT. So now we should be able to program that encryption key. Looks like it worked. So now what we're going to do. I clicked it twice and that is not good. <laughs> so let's just uh, hope it's still in there. We're going to try. So now let's select the RBF file. In this case, it's signed encrypted RBF. Open that up. Select that, deselect that, and click Start. And there it is. So what we just did was we loaded the uh, the certificate file, which wraps the encryption key, that encryption key get loaded into virtual eFuses on the Stratix 10 device. And then once we loaded that, we were able to load a signed and encrypted bitstream file onto the FPGA, and we can see that the LEDs are still blinking. So, I hope this demonstration has provided some insight into adding some basic security features to a Stratix 10 design. For much more information about the Stratix 10 security features, please consult the documents listed in the introduction chapter of the tutorial document. And thank you for listening.